Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I am now going to go through question number eight from the C1 Solomon C collection, uh, C, the Solomon C paper, um, which is part of the Solomon papers, which are taken from very old LXL papers from way in the past. And um, the C1 collection is collecting all the C1 questions together. Um, and I'm going to be going through this question, which I have included in my um, P1 endotopic worksheet number four, which is graphs and transformations. Okay, so I've called this P1 because the new the C1 has changed to P1 now. All right, so this is question number two from my worksheet number eight from this Solomon C paper. Here we're told that figure one shows the graph of y equals f of x. This is a strange type of function. It's called a piecewise function. It changes for different values of x. So in between this range here, when x is less than zero, it acts in a certain way, like looks like y equals x plus two. And there between um, <clears throat> zero and two, when x is between zero and two, it changes to, it looks like um, x plus y equals two, or y equals minus x plus two, you could say. And then it changes again to another, to another graph, which looks like it has a gradient of two y equals two x minus something. And then it changes to y equals four. So it changes at different parts of the, you know, for different domains of the x changes its its, its um, colors, you could say. So the function changes um, in this area. So it's called a piecewise function. But we don't really have to worry about that in this question. It says, first of all, it says, write down the number of solutions that exist for the equation f of x equals 1. Okay. So first of all, f of x equals 1. Now, f of x equals 1 would be a line. Basically, it's a line y equals 1. That's what it is. So we have to draw the line y equals 1, which will be a horizontal line that passes through 1. Make it a bit thinner. Okay, it passes through 1, so it passes through here. So it'll be something like this. Just say that's 1. This will be the line y equals 1. Okay, and we have to say how many solutions there that exist for the equation f of x equals 1. So we want to know when f of x is equal to 1. So the 1 has replaced the y. So y equals 1. All right, so you can see that f of x equals 1 in these three places. 1, 2, 3. I have to basically see where does the line y, y equals f of x intersect with the line y equals 1. And there's three places. Now, it's not asking us to find what they are. It's just how many they are, Okay, how many solutions there are. And we can see that there are three solutions. So for the first part of that question, there's three solutions. If they asked us to find out what they are, we could do so. I mean, I already, I already worked out the equation of this part of the line is y equals um, x plus 2. So when y equals x plus 2, when does when does it hit y equals 1 when x when 1 equals x plus 2 so when x is equal to minus 1 so i know that this value is minus 1 okay so i can find the coordinates of this point all right quite easily okay so it's not something which is um difficult to do but they didn't ask us to do it so we don't have to do it okay so i could do the same thing find the equation of this line which is i said x plus y equals 2 and replace the y with 1 so x plus 1 equals 2 so x equals 1, 2 minus 1, which is 1, and so on and so forth. I can find the equation, I can find the coordinates of these points very easily, yet the question didn't ask me to do that, so I'm not going to do that. And then the second question says, uh, find the solutions, or write down the number of solutions that exist for the equation f of x equals minus x. So we have to draw the line y equals minus x, and see where it intersects with y equals f of x. So we draw the line y equals minus x. Now that's a, a, a line which has a gradient of minus 1, and passes through 0, 0, or the origin. Okay, when x is 0, y is 0. When x is, um, for example, 2, y is minus 2. When x is minus 2, y is 2. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a line that goes something like this. Okay, that's going to be the line. And we can see that this line, y equals minus x, it's going to hit this line in one place. In fact, I've drawn this a bit because it's supposed to be parallel to that line there, I guess. Okay, that's better. So y equals minus x, it cuts this line in one place. It cuts the, this, this line here in one place, which is there, the same place that, in fact, one of the same places where y equals 1 cuts it. 
Okay, you can see that. So it's going to be have it's, this is going to have one solution. Okay, for f of x equals minus x, there's only one place that they're going to intersect, and there we have the answer to part A. Very simple little question. Now we're going to go on to part B. Okay, so part B says. Uh, label, labeling the axes in a similar way, sketch on separate diagrams the graphs of y equals f of x minus 2. So here I have to draw the, um, the transformation of this function. Okay, y equals f of x minus 2. So this is y equals f of x. I've just drawn it, I've got it here so I can see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to redraw this. And I'm going to redraw it as f of x minus 2 like that. So I'm going to have my y-axis and my x-axis. And I'm going to think about what's happening to these points. So basically what this means when it has f of x minus 2, where you see a change taking place inside the function. The original thing was y equals f of x. So you've taken away 2 from inside the function. You've replaced the x with x minus 2 basically you replace the x in our original function with x minus 2 now when it's inside the function that has been affected that only affects the x coordinates okay of the points and it affects it in a way that it seems the opposite of what you normally might think so if it's x minus 2 it means you have to add 2 to all the x coordinates because it shifts two spaces to the right not to the left as you might think because it's inside the function, it kind of does the opposite, you can say. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write down each of these coordinates of these points. So I, I start off with minus 2, 0. That's this point over here. And then I've got 0, 2, which is this point over here. Then I've got 2, 0, this point over here. Then I've got 4, 4, which is this point over here. And I'm going to transform them using f of x plus 2 and think about what happens to each of these points. So as I said, when you have um, f of x plus 2, sorry, f of x minus 2, not plus 2, f of x minus 2, you have to do the opposite. So you have to add 2 to the x-coordinates. So the y-coordinates don't change. It's the x-coordinates that change. So all the y-coordinates of these th four points, they won't change at all. They will be untouched. It's the x-coordinates which we have to add 2 to each of them. So minus 2 plus 2 is 0. So that means this point is going to move to the origin here. That's going to be where this point moves. Okay, it's going to shift two spaces to the left. And 0, 2 becomes 2, 2. Add 2, add two to the x-coordinates. So the 0, 2 that was here, it's going to move to 2, 2. Okay, so I'll just put it like this. 2 and 2. So that point is going to be a point over here. And then we're going to have the 2, 0 is going to become 4, 0. So the 2, 0 here is now going to move to 4, 0. So it's going to be over here now. Because it's going to go through that point. So it's going to come up like this and then down like that. Okay. Um, let's try and do it so that it's more equally apart from each other. Because that's 2 and that's 4 is halfway. Just trying to make the sketch a bit more realistic. And then we know that 4, 4 becomes 6, 4. Add 2 to that, becomes 6, 4. So 4, 4, that was up here before. Let's make this a bit bigger. Okay, so 4, 4 now becomes 6, 4. So that moves to 6, and that's going to be 4 up there. Okay, so that's the point, 6, 4. So let's just draw now the lines in. We're going to have a line coming from the from this from this basically joining these two points together it's going to join these two points together okay and it continues on this way so it continues on this way that's that part of the line drawn then you're going to have the joining from what was 0 2 to 2 2 so now that's 2 2 to 4 0 so it's going to go like this and then there's a line that's joining from 2 0 to 4 4 so now that's 4 0 to 6 4 look like this and then you have a horizontal line going on in this direction horizontal and there we have let me just move this over there okay so there we have now our graph of y equals f x minus 2 
fx minus 2. So you can see basically what's happened is this graph has just shifted two spaces to the left. So you can think of it like you have a graph that looks like this. Okay, you can think of it like the following. And it's not that well drawn, but I'm just doing a rough little thing here. So you can think of it like the whole thing has shifted two spaces to the left. So it was like this, and this is f of x minus 2, so it's horizontal, two spaces to the opposite of minus 2, which is plus 2, so it's going to the, to the right, sorry, two spaces to the right. So that's what's happened there. Okay, so that's exactly why how we can think about what's happened in this case. All right, so there, there we have for number one. Now for number two, we have to draw the, the graph y equals f of 2x. So we have the same points here. One second. We take those points. Put them down here. Okay, so we have those very same points. Now we've got to do the transformation f of 2x. Now what happens here? Well, again, it's inside the function. We're dealing with a change that's happening inside the function. And you would think that you have to... So this is, again, it's not going to affect the y-coordinates. The y-coordinates will only be affected by what's happening outside the function, what's added to the whole function or multiplying the whole function. So what am I doing? That's supposed to be 2 and 4 there. Okay, so you've got here, the, the, uh, the y-coordinates won't change. It's just the x-coordinates that are going to change. So we would think that we have to multiply the x-coordinates by 2. But because it's inside the function, you do the opposite. You have to multiply the x-coordinates by the reciprocal of 2, which is a half. A half times minus 2 is minus 1. A half times 0 is still 0. A half times 2 is 1. And a half times 4 is 2. So the new coordinates of the, these points... This minus 2, 0 becomes a minus 1, 0. And the 0, 2 doesn't change because it's if you, it's like called, called a horizontal stretch. It's on the y-axis. It can't stretch horizontally. Okay, These all get closer to the x-axis by a factor of a half. So this 2, 0 becomes 1, 0. This 4, uh, 4 becomes 2, 4. Becomes 2, 4. Okay, half of the way it was. So it's basically the whole thing... You can see it's like being, being squashed. The whole thing's been squashed into a narrow, you know, in the, in this direction. The y coordinates are the same. It's, it's stayed the same in the y, um, you know, the y direction. But the x direction, it's been squashed basically. Everything's got closer to the x axis, sorry, to the y axis by a factor of a half. So that's what we can see what's happening. So let's just draw this now. So we have something like. Our axes. Okay. And we have the points minus one zero, so we should mark them, and zero two and one zero, and we're gonna have um two four. Two and four. So these are the points. One zero I'm going to have 0, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, 0. That's going to go up to here, and then it's going to go this way. Okay, so let's just draw it now. So it's going to go like this, and then like this, then up here. Okay, and across there. Okay, so this point is now 2, 4. This point is 1, 0. This point is 0, 2. This point is minus 1, 0. So we've drawn the graph. I can just carry on in this direction as well, as it does there. OK, continues down. So there is a graph of y equals f of 2x. So all the transformations we've seen in this particular question affect the x-coordinates. When you're adding something or subtracting something, it causes you to add or subtract to the x-coordinate. If it's something negative, 
that you're adding that you're putting inside the function then you go towards the right if it's positive you go towards the left so you add if it's x minus 2 you add 2 to the x coordinate if it's x plus 2 you would take away 2 from the x coordinate and here f of 2x you are going to change the x coordinate the y coordinate stays the same the x coordinates are multiplied by the reciprocal of whatever is multiplying this so this is 2 it's going to be multiplied by a half if this was for example 3 over 2 then you multiply the x coordinates by 2 over 3 okay the reciprocal of it okay not the negative reciprocal just the reciprocal all right so there we have the um, graphs and transformations question from this Solomon um, C paper other questions from the Solomon C paper that I've answered I will collect in this playlist this is for the P1 collection of C of Solomon papers um, and here we're going to have another link for um, the topic of graphs and transformations from P1 questions to do with that I'll collect together in the playlist and over here then the end of topic worksheet that I've made for my P1 um, I'm going to co collect the questions from that in this playlist you can subscribe to my channel from this icon that's going to appear here and on the top of the page you'll see a card which pops up from time to time which tells you um, or takes you to another paper that I've answered like a proper P1 whole paper so thank you for watching uh, and I hope you understood and hope to see you soon.